we're going to talk about God's power, God's presence, and God's protection. Start with a quote from a classic from my era, Catch-22 by Joseph Heller. There was a character in there whose parents had named him Major Major, and his middle name was Major, and he had the rank of Major. So, this is a quote from the book. Major Major had been born too late and too mediocre. Some men are born mediocre, some achieve mediocrity, and some have mediocrity thrust upon them. With Major 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 Major, it had been all three. Even among men lacking all distinction, Major Major stood out among them as a man lacking more distinction than the rest. People who met him were always impressed by how unimpressive he was. Prabhupada said, quote, Chant the names of the Lord, Hare Krishna, sincerely and with good intelligence. Consultation, guidance, direction, intelligence will come from within. Krishna says that those who are engaged in my service, Tesham, Satyata, Yuktanam, Bhajatam, Priti, Purvakam, I give them all intelligence for their progressive march back to home, back to God. What this is, is a call for excellence. Would you agree with me today that too many people are not going through life with gusto? Just going through the motions, eating, sleeping, mating, defending without any higher purpose or goal. Maybe they had a dream one time in the past, but the weight of time, pressures at work, raising a family, they've allowed themselves to get worn down, lost their passion, become robotic and going about their daily lives. They may have forgotten about how in youth they were fired up to make a difference in the world. Now, instead of making a difference, they're just making a living. If you're an average American, you own credit cards. If you're an average American, you're married, you're 29 years old. Your height is 5'9 if you're a male, 5'4 if you're a female. You laugh 15 times a day. You make 1,029 phone calls a year. Your average lifespan if you're a man is 71, 76 if you're a woman. If you're an average American, you have 27 trillion fat cells in your body. Before we can even face each other in the morning, we American men and women use an average of eight different personal hygiene items for the men and 12 for the women. Now, being called average is not a compliment because it means you're as close to the bottom as you are to the top. Old Mendino wrote in a book called The Greatest Medicine in the World, most humans in varying degrees are already dead. In one way or another, they've lost their dreams, their ambitions, their desire for a higher life. They've surrendered their fight for self-esteem, compromised their great potential, settled for a life of mediocrity, days of despair, and nights of tears. They are no more than the living dead interred in cemeteries of their own choosing. Yet he says they need not remain in that state. They can be resurrected from their sorry condition. They can each perform the greatest miracle in the world, which is what? Being resurrected from the dead. God or Krishna never meant for you to live an average, so-so, mediocre, halfway from the top, halfway from the bottom, just kind of a lukewarm life. Every human being was designed by the Creator for excellence, uniquely designed to make a difference. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, second chapter, 12th verse, Kim Pramatasya Bhuhi Prokshahirin Bairam Mahartam Biditam Adate Gitate Prabhat. Sukadeva Goswami tells the great King Maharaj Parikit, what is the value of a prolonged life which is wasted, inexperienced by years in this world? Better a moment of full consciousness because that gives one a start in searching after his supreme interest. Do you notice among children and when we were children ourselves, we had a tremendous desire to be recognized and approved by our fathers and mothers? The little girl, she's not going to go down the slide until what happens? Till daddy's watching, right? If daddy's not watching, she ain't going down the slide. And if daddy, if it takes too long, she's going to say, Daddy, watch me. But nothing is more profoundly satisfying than for that little girl to have her daddy say, That's my girl. 
And as adults, it's no different. We want to draw attention and approval, but we've learned to do it in more subtle, sophisticated ways. We draw attention with the car we drive, with the house we live in, with the magazines that we very carefully and artfully strew across the coffee table. Can I tell you that for our own emotional health, we need to stand out and that there are three steps to excellence. One is to have a great ambition. Two is to depend on Krishna or God. And three is to grow your faith. Great ambition. Life with no challenges and no goals can be summed up in one word, boredom. Boredom is epidemic in the modern world. Herman Hesse wrote, when I have neither pleasure nor pain and have been breathing for a while the lukewarm, insipid air of these so-called good and tolerable days, I feel so bad in my childlike soul that I smash my moldering lyre of thanksgiving in the face of the slumbering god of contentment and would rather feel the very devil burn in me than this warmth of a well-heated room. A wild longing for strong emotions and sensations sees in me a rage against this toneless, flat, normal, and sterile life. Our encouragement today is... If you don't have any challenge in your life, you better go out and get some for your own emotional well-being. Krishna blessed me to do something big. Krishna blessed me to make a significant difference in my life. Krishna saved me from mediocrity, from commonality. I don't want to be ordinary. I want to expand. I want to grow. Krishna, I need this for my own health. And second is depend upon Krishna. In a Back to Godhead article, Satsarup Maharaj, the article is called The Voice of Inspiration. He says, Srila Prabhupada always credited his spiritual master, Bhakti Siddhanta, for pulling him out of mundane material life. Prabhupada said, because of my spiritual master, I left three children and now I had 300 children. This was at an early stage of his preaching. He ended up with 4,000 500 initiated disciples, he said, any one of whom would give up their life for me. Depending on Krishna does not have anything to do with so-called material security, with your job, your bank balance, the stock market, the state of the economy. And depending on Krishna has to do with thinking big in Krishna consciousness, knowing that Krishna or God can do anything. It has to do with taking the limits off of God and stepping into the middle of of what it is he created you to do. And then grow your faith. The key to growing your faith is to find your mission and the purpose for which you are created and then step right in the middle of it. The way of growing your faith is to accept a challenge, to stretch your faith. It's emotionally unhealthy, even suicidal, to go through life being mediocre, half-hearted, wondering, what am I doing? Where am I going? Taking up space, breathing, oxygen, going to work, coming home, watching TV, same old, same old. The key is to find out why you were created. What's the plan for your life? Then get right in the center. Be challenged, stretched. Human beings were made for growth. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. In this little book called Renunciation Through Wisdom, Prabhupada says, Lord Krishna's devotees are exceptional personalities. Because of their contact with the Lord, they are embellished with extraordinary characteristics which are rarely attained even by the demigods. He goes on to say, to usher in an age of peace in this world, we need a class of men who are Mahatmas. Mahatmas are great souls who have a big ambition to serve the Lord, who depend upon the Lord, and who constantly grow their faith in the Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare. On the way to excellence are three misconceptions that people often have. One is they confuse humility with fear, contentment with laziness, and little thinking with spirituality. Confusing fear with humility. We don't have great ambitions. You hear people say, oh, I could never do that. Little old me could never do that. And we think that's being humble. That's not humility, that's fear. 
It's not humility, it's a lack of faith. If we were truly humble, we'd say with Krishna, God's help, I can do it. I can do all things with God who strengthens me. I may not be able to do it on my own, but with God's help, I can do it. Prabhupada used to say of the successful growing movement that he started, practically there is no credit for me. If there is any credit, it goes to my Lord, Sri Krishna. He is helping me to establish the Krishna conscious movement in the Western countries. Whatever being done, it is done according to his divine grace only. So my business is just to carry out his order. That is the way of the humble follower. And then we tend to confuse laziness with contentment. We are advised, it's true, to be content in everything, but some people take that verse to mean that you should not have any goals. If contentment were used as an excuse for laziness, who would ever go to school? Who would ever go to work on Monday morning? Who would ever pay your taxes? The kid in the third grade says, I've learned to be content in the third grade. I don't need to go to the fourth grade. Who would ever do anything, in fact? Finally, we confuse little thinking with spirituality. Well, I just serve God in my own little way. Well, stop it. Serve him in a bigger way. Let God use you in a greater way. People say, that's just the way I am. That's just the way God made me. No, God didn't make you that way. Don't blame God for your laziness and your lack of growth. Recognize that the most fulfilling ambition is to do God's will. Find out why Krishna placed me on the earth in the first place. Discover that and get right into the center of it. It is said, seek first Krishna or God's kingdom and then all other things will be added to you. There is absolutely nothing that Krishna or God won't do for the person whose sole ambition is God's glory. In the Bhagavad Gita, Song of God, ninth chapter, 22nd verse, Ananyas chintayanto maum yejana paratesham nitya yoga saiva vahami aham. Those who worship me with devotion, meditating on my transcendental form, to them I carry what they lack and preserve what they have. Again, devotees are exceptional personalities and his representatives should be treated with exceptional care. Devotees don't eat meat in a world of meat eaters. They don't smoke, they don't take tea, or they practice sense control in a world where most people are whipped up into a frenzy of lack of sense control. Devotees grow their faith in God in a secular world. Devotees pray, Lord, I want you to bless me with a great faith. Like the prayer of William Carey who said, Attempt great things for God and then expect great things from God. There is something more important than talent, something more important than ability in life, and that's faith. Faith is believing that God can do great things through you if you let him. I know a lot of super talented people, and you probably do too, who are just sitting on the sidelines of life because they have no faith. And less talented people, people with less ability, less connections, they're down there scoring the touchdowns. Why? Because they're believing in God. To live above average, we need a power greater than our own to accomplish dreams. God is daring us this evening to do something big. He says, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not even know about. Krishna is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power which is at work within us. And what does that mean? It means you cannot out-ask God. You cannot out-dream God. Stretch your imagination to the greatest thing that you could possibly think about, the greatest thing that could possibly happen, and then realize that Krishna is going to take that and supersize it. He's going to go way beyond the furthest stretches of your imagination. Now think, what is it that you want God to do in your life? Heal a bad marriage? Ask him. Help you with a problem? Ask him. Start that mission? Ask him. Found that orphanage? Ask him. Help you with some goals? Ask him. What do you want God to do in your life? God says, you have not because you ask not. Asking God to empower you to do things has nothing to do with selfishness. You're simply praying for more responsibility because with more responsibility, you need God's presence in your life. 
with more responsibility, there'll be more, more demands, more pressure. You cannot assume the burden of greater responsibility until you have God's greater presence in your life. So first, ask for God's power to reach your goals. Then ask for God's presence to maintain those goals. Krishna, I want you to be with me. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Rama, Rama, Hare Hare. Chanting the holy names cleanses the heart, extinguishes the flame, breaks the chains, blesses the earth at large with moonlight rays, discharging waves of nectar. Our senses are craven since ancient days. The holy names put all of their blessings to shame. Krishna, Govinda, chanted anywhere, everywhere. The mercy shakti is fully there. A the divine app to restore your mental software. Zap the mile or restart your heart. Tap the reservoir of loving care. No hard and fast rules, no lessons, no schools. The bliss of bhakti rare, yet free for the taking. Only declare your heart is aching in divine love awakening. Night and day by constant recitation, chant the holy name without hesitation. Free from temptation with the sensation. Feeling yourself lower and strong, the street more tall than the tree. Devoid of all sense of all false prestige. Humility is the key to enjoy the vibration eternally. Wealth in the millions, beautiful women, the spell of fame, worldly acclaim, even liberation, hate, totally name compared to the champagne of chanting the holy name. Krishna Govinda, though you're the one, second and none, my shining sun, I'm heartbroken in this ocean of birth and death. It's not worth the commotion. Pull me out of this cruel blender, surrender as an atom in the sweet splendor of your tender lotus feet. Lord, when my eyes pour with tears of love like rain from the skies above, when my voice choke up, even though you restrain me by your embrace or pain me by hiding your face, you remain, my Lord, unconditionally, no matter what the difficulty, decline or gain, rain or shine, I am yours and you are mine. And the more that your ambitions are fulfilled, the more that Krishna's presence is in your life, then it will happen that the more people will be envious of you, the more people will attack you. So then you ask Krishna, give me the power to reach my goal. Second, give me the presence to be in me as I maintain it. And third, Give me your protection as I live for you. With Krishna's power and Krishna's presence and Krishna's protection, you don't have to fear a thing. Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, second chapter, fifth verse. Tajma bhada desarvadma bhagavanishwara shota vyakirta tabyas jayas puja sinichanam. Again, Sukadeva Goswami tells Maharaj Prikit, one who desires to be free of all miseries in this world must hear about, glorify, and also remember the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the super soul, the controller, and the savior from all miseries. And Prabhupada writes in the purport to that verse, the foolishly materially attached men and women are wasting their valuable time in the improvement of the material conditions by sleeping, indulging in sex life, developing economic conditions, and maintaining a band of relatives who are to be vanquished in the air of oblivion. Being engaged in all these materialistic activities, the living soul entangles himself in the cycle of fruit of actions. This entails the chain of birth and death in the 8,400,000 species of life, the aquatics, the vegetables, reptiles, birds, beasts, uncivilized human being, and then again the human form, which is the chance for getting out of the cycle of fruit of reaction. Therefore, if one desires freedom from this vicious cycle, one must cease to act as a karmi or enjoyer of the results of one's own work, good or bad. One should not do anything, either good or bad, on his own account, but must execute everything on behalf of the Supreme Lord, the ultimate proprietor of everything that be. Therefore, any sensible man who is above the average with a poor fund of knowledge must constantly remember the personality of Godhead by hearing about him, glorifying and remembering him and worshiping always without cessation. That is the way of pure devotional service. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. In conclusion, how do you get that lifestyle where you live above average, where you stand out in a crowd, get a great ambition, get a glimpse of what Krishna wants to do in your life, then get a growing faith and let Krishna give you the power to do what you see as impossible. And when you have a great ambition and a growing faith, you'll depend upon Krishna to accomplish dreams which you could not accomplish on your own. You'll expect Krishna to take you places you would not normally go and you'll shine as an example of what it means to live super excellently in this life and in the next life. You'll go back to home, back to God. 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare.